So the 9060 XT just launched, and today we are going to take apart the 9060 XT 16 gigabyte and 8 gigabyte. So these are the Sapphire Pulse models. Uh, externally, they look about the same. Don't show it like blur that. That's going to get us demonetized. So it should be pretty simple. Thermally, it was like 56 degrees Celsius on the core once it hit steady state. Hotspot Delta was about 23 degrees over the GPU core. So a little bit more on the Delta than I'd like to see, but not the worst we've seen. And both numbers ultimately were within acceptable uh, performance levels. The memory was a little warm at 85 degrees Celsius at steady state in an ambient temperature of 21. So in a case ambient where it's a little higher, could be problematic. But we're going to rip it apart and see how they put it together. Uh, this should be one of the simplest teardowns we've done because we're getting into the lower end stuff now and they tend to be pretty straightforward. If you want the full review though, that is already on the channel uh, and we've got all the benchmarks. So let's get into the teardown. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly and their new Duronaut Thermal Paste. Thermal Grizzly claims its Duronaut Paste is intended for long-term stability and endurance, focusing on paste longevity in addition to the usual performance focus. Thermal Grizzly's Duronaut Paste comes with applicators and spreaders and ships in numerous tube sizes, aiming to provide a high-end paste for PC builds and daily driven overclocks by enthusiasts. Learn more at the link in the description below. All right, so this is the pulse. Apparently it's overclock. Uh, when we checked in the frequency <laughs> validation, it, it was hitting the exact requirement for the frequency. So the requirement was uh, 3130 megahertz, I think, which is exactly what it hit. So calling it overclock, I'm, I'm not really sure I agree with that. Okay. And uh, it's fine. <laughs> Otherwise, we're just going to get straight into this. So for the card itself, it's a dual fan cooler. The PCB cuts off about here, partway through that second fan, uses a flow through design for the back. Uh, flow through here is not as important because the power consumption is, uh, is less than 200 watts. So it's really just, it doesn't need a whole lot of cooling for this. The fin stack is vertically oriented, so the air is going to shoot up and out. Fortunately, they're not really blocking much of it. So we're kind of past those days where they used to pull the plastic down the companies to block the fin stack. So this is able to breathe fully. There's a large gap there into the PCB and just looking down it, I mean, there's not a whole lot going on for the cooler, which again makes sense for a cheaper card. The back for IO, we have three ports and uh, it is punctured, you know, perforated, but there's no exhaust through the fin stack is vertically oriented. So the only air going out there is going in through the fan here and just exiting. Um, and then this card, it looks identical with the exception of I can see the PCB lengths a little different on this one. The eight gigabyte model appears to be slightly shorter. So we'll look at that just to look at it. But otherwise this should be a, a pretty straightforward one. All right, so not too many screws on this. We need to track the screws today. Let's get that out of the way. And for the card, so we got the four spring retention screws for the actual heat sink. It looks like it's gonna be a couple screws going, that's going all the way through into the shroud. That's the shroud. I think that might be it. This might be one of the easiest ones we've done in a while. So we'll just, let's do the shroud screws first. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, going for the large screws. For the shroud. We'll track that on the mod mat, which you can grab on store.gamersnexus.net if you'd like to get one and support us at the same time. It might only be like eight screws. There's a few on the other side going through the top of the PCB. Well, this is going to be fast. And then we'll do these as well. So we've got two here holding the shroud in and then these are holding the plate to the I.O. Or I should say holding the PCIe slot to the shroud for these two. Oh, there's three. Okay. All right. Oh, that was pretty fast. Cool. This is, this is good. So, Classic uh, Sapphire fashion. The board is almost certainly an AMD reference PCB. I'm, I'm not sure yet at this stage, but uh, the cooler assembly, this is how Sapphire tends to uh, approach these lower end pulse models where because this is totally separate and we didn't need to even loosen the screws that retain the cold plate to the GPU, which is where the paste is. That means if you ever had a fan die, you could actually just pull this part off with the screws I just did. Uh, 
you know, disconnect and then swap the fans, which is great. And this is very serviceable if you need to replace a fan or something. Very easy to get into, and um, and you wouldn't have to disturb the thermal paste. I hate these connectors, though. Oh, sure, yeah, thanks. Vitaly coming in with, uh, I just bought these in Taiwan. Allow me to, let's interrupt this with something actually important. These are the best tools ever made. Uh, every time I go to Taiwan, I buy these tools. So this, I know only as number 017. Uh, it's like two bucks US, that's what that number means. And uh, these, this one in particular, these are incredibly fine pointed tweezers. Uh, and I think they're like a stainless steel. Anyway, these, I buy them every single time I go there. They're in the basement in Guanhua Digital Plaza. There it goes. It's the same thing every time, Andrew. <laughs> All right. So this is my only, everything about this is like so good every time with the assembly, but Sapphire, I need you to please change the fan connector that you use. Everything else is easy. It's got those little notches. Anyway, we got it out, so everything's good. Uh, okay, so getting into the rest of this, this is that's also why I buy so many of these. Uh, get into the rest of this. So a couple screws going through into the back plate, which is secured through through the top of the card. And then uh, we just need to get these four screws out. So there's one that is labeled. It doesn't say warranty void, which is unenforceable, so that's good. But it's obviously a tamper seal. All right, so that'll just fall through. Okay, cool. That is an extremely tiny die. It's very small. It looks like they might actually have text on it this time. That's rare for AMD. All right, so for layout, we'll clean that off in a second. They are using a phase change thermal pad instead of just a paste. Uh, these are, I mean, they're everywhere now. They've, they've been in use pretty heavily since the 20 series, really. But uh, so that's a phase change pad of some kind. Um, Honeywell is not the only brand that makes them. There's cheaper ones. And then they just have normal thermal pads for the four memory modules. And uh, this one is... This is the 16 gigabyte module or model. For the VRM, so there's a thermal pad here contacting these MOSFETs. On the right side, on the left side, another thermal pad contacting a base plate, which is connected to the fin stack. And then the fin stack's got, uh, let's see, looks like three six mil heat pipes running through it, through this side. So very basic, but there's also not a whole lot to cool here. Um, it looks like they do manage to get all three heat pipes straight across the die, uh, so they're at least getting pretty full exposure to that. And then there's just the copper cold plate uh, at the base, surrounded by this looks like a nickel plated copper base plate for the memory, sharing the same cooling solution. So very simple. As far as the board, so like I said, I, this is probably an AMD reference board. I'm not sure on the 9060 designs yet. I haven't opened it off of them, uh, but. You can see here there was an option to side mount the 8-pin. So there's the solder joint for it. Uh, they could have put it here. They could have run two of them. And then there's some blank pads where I uh, could have added some additional controllers. There's another uh, fan connector option down here. This one, they could have gone with the uh, larger connector that joins LED and the um, FanTac and PWM. There's a missing phase up here that was optional as well. 
but none of this is crazy. This is just kind of how they make the boards. And then two bumpers here, which can help with uh, spacing, positioning when installing it in assembly, and with uh, potentially with vibration, but normally it's for assembly alignment, as far as I understand. So I'll just clean this off and then take a measurement as well. Well, they did actually print on it. AMD hasn't always done that. A lot of times they leave it blank. AMD is using their new printing technology. It's actually the same font size as the uh, the transistor size. Uh, <laughs> two four five two, made in Taiwan. I mean, it's TSMC. That makes sense. Uh, it looks like it might just be a serial number on there. For die size. So the actual official numbers should be out there, but taking the external measurement, including bulk silicon or the diffusion barrier, that's uh, roughly there. That's 15.65 millimeters by 13.07. So it'd be like 204 or so millimeters squared, 205. Uh, and then the official number should be out there. It'll be a little different. All right, let's do the last part here. The backside, okay, well, there's that might be our answer. That's what we'll want to look for. There's memory on the back. That's abnormal. We don't, I mean, these days it is. So, uh, so it is not double density on the front. They've gone two-sided. We'll have to see if the 8 gigabyte one is just single-sided. If so, then that answers the, the question of if they increase the density or if they just double up on the actual physical uh, VRAM modules. So anyway, more on the back. The thermal pads connecting to the back plate here are good. I mean, that's what we want to see. Uh, you can see they've cut out in this, like, mylar, the, um, the holes so that they actually contact metal. I've seen cards that don't do that in the past and just insulate it. Uh, so they are actually getting some use out of all this surface area. It's not finned or anything, but it's still a lot of surface area for how relatively low heat the memory modules are. Um, that may be where we're seeing that 85 degree number in our testing uh, because the, the back side is just, it's not getting as much direct cooling as the front side is since the front side is not only getting hit by fans, but is also connected to the heat sink. So that's probably what that is. Um, and now we'll just take apart the eight gigabyte as well, just to see if it's single sided as we'd expect. Okay, so this is the eight gigabyte model. This, it should be basically the same thing. I'm not gonna explain the whole process for this one. Um, it does, however, have two stickers on it. Instead of P, it's WD. I have no idea what that, warranty destroyed. I'm assuming that's what that means. <laughs> or it's an, maybe it's an M, I guess, depending on your perspective. But uh, this should be pretty easy. So we're just gonna pop this open and check for the presence of backside memory modules. It should be the last one. This time, I'm going to leave the fan connected. Okay. That's interesting. There was an extra thermal pad on this one. I don't think that thermal pad is on. Yeah. That thermal pad was not on this, this board. Uh, unless it's, I'll look around, unless it's fallen somewhere, it wasn't there either. I don't think there was a thermal pad on there. I'll check the footage later. All right, now we just need to get into the, uh, the back side. So this board's already different, actually. It does not have the additional eight pin. So they may have two different reference board designs. It's possible Sapphire did a custom board. I don't think they did on this, but um, I, have not, I have not checked yet. 
All right. So are they on anything? That is the question. They are not. <laughs> cool. Okay. Well, that certainly keeps the uh, factory SOP for assembly simple. <laughs> so memory is only on the front for the 8 gig. Uh, there's only two options. It's either a density change, which is expensive, or single-sided, which I guess can also be expensive depending on the PCB design. But uh, they're still using the thermal pad location, and they're still syncing it to the same spot, which means that Sapphire is able to at least get some of the heat through the board and into the backlight, which is useful. I mean, on a higher heat load, higher flux, uh, we've seen benefit to that in the past. So it's anywhere from like one to two degrees. The most I ever saw was seven by sinking through the backside, and that was due to a particularly poor design overall. Uh, but on the back of the PCB, we've also got this thermal pad to sink into the back plate, which may have been missing on this one, actually. That's, yeah. So if they did the same thing, it would be probably down here. Which, let's just flip that over. Yeah, that would be the other side of the MOSFETs. So uh, no thermal pad on the back side of those FETs. I mean, it's not going to make a huge impact on the cooling of it because, again, I keep coming back to it's just really low power. But uh, I'm thinking that was probably a mistake uh, one way or the other. For the rest of this, board's a little shorter. It's a single 8-pin. Uh, uh, the other one's single as well, but there's no extra spot to add another one and uh, otherwise I mean the GPU is the same it's just different memory so that'll be it for the 8 gig. All right so pretty straightforward basically the difference between the two models is on the 16 gigabyte one there's memory on the back as you'd expect there's there's thermal pads on the back of both but this is the only one with the memory on the back and then it's got the blank for an extra 8 pin which is not necessary but if they ran a vBIOS that had a higher power target they can make use of it and otherwise, uh, this board, the 16 gigabyte one, was missing the extra thermal pad on the back of the MOSFETs that the 8 gigabyte model has. You can see those there. And uh, let's orient them the same way too. And then the front of the 16 gig, we think was missing a thermal pad, but I'll check in the footage. Uh, if this stays in, then it is missing the thermal pad. And if it doesn't stay in, then you'll never know. So <laughs> if this is still in there, it was missing the thermal pad on that, um, the, the bottom of the VRM on the right side, I think it was. So anyway, that's the difference between them. The PCB length is slightly longer on the 16 gigabyte model. And the cooling solution for both of them is, I think, identical. So it's three six mil heat pipes on both. Same cooling solution, same thermal pads except for the two that I just pointed out. They're just on the board. And uh, it's very tiny. I mean, this is like one of the smallest fin stacks I've seen in a while, but it's also not dealing with a lot of heat. So I think that's pretty much it. If you want to see the review, it's on the channel already. You can go to the channel and check out how the 9060 XT performs in actual gaming scenarios. We've also got the thermal benchmark on there, but I gave you the numbers here. Assembly-wise, it's the same sapphire pulse approach that they normally do so very easy to take it apart easy to swap the fans other than the one cable that i hate the connector uh but pretty simple to work with so that's it for this one thanks for watching as always subscribe for more go to store.gamersnexus.net to support us directly like by grabbing one of our mod mats or patreon.com slash gamersnexus and we'll see you all next time